Hey everyone, thanks for attending today's uh, roundtable discussion. Today the topic we're going to focus on is measuring the effectiveness of your digital signage. Uh, the Hangout's put on today by the Digital Signage Federation, and I'll be your moderator. My name's Ryan Cahoy from Rise Vision. Uh, I co-chair the Education Subcommittee uh, for the Digital Signage Federation. Uh, we want to keep today uh, an open, interactive conversation, so as you're watching this, if you have any questions, we definitely encourage your questions and your feedback. Uh, on the video window in the lower right-hand corner, you should have a green box that says ask a new question. Anytime you have a thought, a question, something you want us to dig a little further into, just hit that button and type whatever you're thinking in there. If you see other questions that interest you, feel free to vote those up as well. Um, if for some reason you don't see that green button, if you mouse over your video towards the top of your screen, you'll probably see a little checkerboard of nine dots. If you click on that, you should see something that says Q&A. If you click it, it'll open up the, uh, the chat window there. If for whatever reason that's not working or you're just viewing it through the Google event page, we'll moderate questions through there as well. Right below the video window, there's a box that says say something. Feel free to type any questions or thoughts you have in there and we'll, we'll grab those as we go as well. Um, as I mentioned, today's uh, Hangout is put on by the Digital Signage Federation. If you haven't checked out the website for a while, feel free to uh, take a few moments and, and browse through it. A number of great resources for market vertical guides and case studies and education, news for members. Uh, so definitely check it out. And if you have something to contribute, if you've got a case study, some photos, uh, any interesting news for digital signage, uh, please uh, share it with us. I'll put Brian and Jerry's information up at the end of this, uh, just so you've got their email addresses. Um, also, uh, if you are interested in events like this where we're doing these live hangouts, we strive to do them every couple, three weeks, and a full event calendar is always posted out on the DSF website under events. In addition to the hangouts, you'll see upcoming trade shows, events, meet and greets, all kinds of great things that the DSF's doing to you know, really help kind of pull the, the industry together and, and create conversations. Um, so joining me today, we've got a couple of panelists uh, coming from the content management and the software side of things, so we'll, we'll get to them in just a moment here. Uh, first off, we have Jesse Kim from NPlug. Uh, NPlug's a content management solution, and we'll let uh, Jesse talk about some of the neat things they're doing there at NPlug. And also joining us is Jim Maraccio from Eleven Giraffes, who uh, likewise, a uh, SaaS-based content management solution, and uh, we'll, we'll get their perspective on audience measurement uh, as well. Um, as I mentioned, my name's Ryan Cohoy from Rise Vision. I'll moderate. So if you, again, do have questions, feel free to throw those in. Um, but also, we're, we're always trying to come up with new topics for these types of Hangouts. So I put my email address on the screen there. If you've got questions, if you've got ideas for a Hangout, if you'd be willing to participate, especially end users or integrators, people that are actually using some of these uh, solutions we're talking about, please uh, reach out to us. We're, we're always looking for content to help feed the beast. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, I put up both Brian and Jerry's contact information from the DSF. Uh, again, if you'd be more comfortable reaching out to them with topic ideas, if you want to take part, we are a volunteer organization. So if you want to join in, you know, uh, join some of the committees, help put different things together, we're always looking for more able bodies to, to help make a, a better experience. Um, and again, uh, please ask questions. We, we really like your feedback to kind of guide the conversation to cover the things that you're interested in learning about today as we go through the, the conversation. So with that, I'm going to uh, kick things over to our panel here and, and get the conversation started. I'll start with you, Jim. Uh, if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, tell about your background with digital signage and some of the things you guys are doing over at 11 Drafts. Great. Thanks, Ryan. So my name is Jim Arashu. I'm the Chief Technology Officer and VP of Operations for 11 Giraffes. As Ryan mentioned a little while ago, um, we are a software as a service uh, digital signage content management system provider that includes media players and uh, all the ancillary products around content creation, aggregation, management, distribution, playback, monitoring, all those tools. So really kind of a full service on the software side of digital signage and ultimately I'm responsible for the product and we'll be talking a little bit more about how you can use that, ours and other products as well in just a little bit. Oops, sorry, kind of challenge getting my mute off. Um, I will kick it over to you, Jesse, if you want to give us a little bit of background on NPlug and some of the things you're doing. Oh, you're muted. Oh, okay. 
Great. So thank you, Ryan. I'm Chief Strategy Officer of Unplug, and we are a SaaS or platform as a service for digital signage, and we are an app-based platform, and we have a variety of apps that are ready to go, designed to grow, and audiences increase engagement. And then we also have our platform as a service where any developer can create their own custom interactive experience that agencies, many agencies, are currently utilizing. Great. Okay, well, let's jump into kind of a quick conversation. Um, I'll start with you, Jim. I want to talk a little bit about some of the installation environments that are using uh, different measurement techniques to measure the performance of their digital signage. Uh, talk about some of the areas where you see benefits coming out of that. And are there any particular environments that are using this that maybe it's not relevant to measure the results? Sure. Well, I, I think first and foremost, it really is relevant to varying degrees at any, uh, re really in any type of deployment. Uh, you know, in some cases, it's simply are people engaging at all, are screens placed in the right locations. In others, it's much more focused around the content and are people engaged with the content? Are, is it the right demographic being engaged with the content and how do they do that? So uh, I'll argue really that any deployment should have some level of measurement going on with it. And you know, obviously if it's a flight board at an airport, it probably doesn't require the same amount as it would maybe in a retail space or in an interactive kiosk. Uh, to ensure that the content's appropriate and designed right and that the displays are placed in the right locations and that type of thing. Okay, great. Uh, Jesse, I'll throw the same question in your direction. Uh, if you want to give your perspective on some of the environments that are maybe getting more benefit out of measurement and are there any that uh, you don't see it as applicable? Oh, sorry, you're muted again. So from our experience, it all depends on the buyer and what they're looking to get. So whether it be a digital out-of-home network, they have advertisers that are trying to factor in what is the ROI of this spend versus a retailer that just wants to capture their customer data versus a marketer that wants to capture social media engagement and analytics. So it really depends on the buyer and what they're looking to get out of it. So one interesting use case that I've seen is internal communication. So we're utilized in many offices worldwide and we're used for communication purposes for employee engagement. So in that case, uh, they don't really look for specific metrics, but they will on a campaign basis. So they might run a survey where they want their employees to text message their answers over time, and that would provide other metrics that they're looking for on a per campaign basis. Also for marketers, when they're utilizing our social media applications, they would look to do A-B testing. So if they have a specific call to action on their digital signage, they want to see how many customers they actually captured. So, so it really depends on who's paying at the end of the day and the goal they're looking to get out of it. We actually have a few clients that don't look for any analytics and they just want their displays. Okay. Well, you, you touched on goals. So what guidance do you provide? I'll start with you again, Jesse, on goals, you know, helping them define what their goals should be for digital signage. Sure, so we take a very consultative approach with our clients. We have to be chameleons, which can be challenging, but also very exciting, no day is the same. But when it, we always start with a goal and goal in mind. So a lot of times, it's really difficult to know what data you want to gather. That's probably the most challenging place to start, is what questions do you want to ask? Because we can gather all sorts of data, and if it, at the end of the day it's not actionable or it doesn't inform your decision making, it's pointless to gather. So, so what we do is we help guide them and ask to determine at least three questions that they want to, 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 to answer, to gather data around, to engage and capture the audience around. And that is the starting point and then they can adjust from there. Just curious on that. So when you ask them to define three questions, do you find that there's a common 
uh, questions that your your users want to answer, or do you find it to be pretty widely divergent depending on the environment and different customers? Are they always different? They are always different. So we started out in digital signage with our social media wall, and that's how we entered the digital signage space. So we started out talking to marketers and business owners who wanted to show some kind of increase in engagement digitally. And so the great thing was that we had businesses contacting us, and all they wanted to see was some kind of increase. And they contacted us and said, hey, we saw not only saw a social increase, but also an increase in revenue. And that actually surprised us as well. And we didn't even anticipate that to happen. And it happened organically. So, so that's that, that was like one question where we started out in our evolution as a company. And then as we grew, we became a lot more complicated. So, so for one uh, commercial real estate client that we're working with, for them it was about saving time, saving man hours, saving costs. And that was the metric that they were looking for. For another company, for internal communications and digital signage, they're actually promoting a mobile app which allows their employees to order lunch through the mobile app. So by promoting the mobile application and usage of it every day to their employees, then they're able to see an increase in mobile app usage. So those are some, like, three of the most common ways that we've been utilized. Okay, great. Well, I'll kick the same question to you, Jim. How do you guide your clients on defining goals? Sure. I think Jesse had a great answer. It really is about objectives. And before you define what the goals are, you really need to understand what are the objectives of the network or what are the objectives of certain kinds of media within the network. And you know, everybody comes down to, oh, we want to, you know, in the retail space, we're, we're to increase car size and, and sell more. But, you know, you've got to get them to peel back behind that. And I think from there coming back, it really does vary widely. In some cases, um, it's informative and you're trying to get people to engage with certain things. In some places, you're trying to drive certain traffic patterns. Um, you could be trying to get them to interact with another display or with a kiosk somewhere or with a mobile website. Um, social media. So it, it really um, it is important for you to step back and understand what is the objective of this network? What is, what's the client trying to do? And then peel that onion back with them because very often they, they tend to be somewhat superficial. Um, they, they know what they're trying to or they, they think they know what they're trying to get to but it's not as detailed as maybe it should be and, and our job really is to help them peel that onion back and understand what's at the core of it and then define specific measurables that they can use or that we can help facilitate for them uh, to achieve that so they can determine are we meeting the desired goal or are we not. And, you know, some examples of that, I mentioned social media. Um, you know, one thing, we do a lot of work in the retail space and in, uh, you know, anytime you can get free advertising, it's great. And brands want people talking about them, especially in a positive way. So being able to uh, promote via signage uh, certain actions and get people to use hashtags and tweets or on Facebook and then trying to track the, the end of that. Obviously on the sales side, um, promoting certain items and then uh, coming back to the sales data and saying, hey, did we see lift in that item in the stores where we promoted this? Uh, and, and that's probably the most, the one that everybody always comes to, especially in the retail space. Uh, very often, however, that's not data that the clients are willing to share with us. So our job is really, again, from a facilitative role to help them understand, okay, here's the type of things we can track. Here's the type of things that you should be able to define some causation or ideally correlation um, between and then bring help them get that data uh, to those clients. But it really varies and comes back to objectives right at the very beginning again. Do you try to guide people to a set number? Like if they come to you with 10 different objectives, do you try to limit them to, hey, let's focus on one or two, or is there a magic number? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Ryan. Uh, you know, the net of it is if they're trying to do 10 things, they're not going to do any of them well. So we always try to come back and hit two or three. And generally, that's easier than it initially sounds. Um, it, they, they start throwing out things and get up to seven, eight, nine, ten. But a lot of those are really uh, different examples of the same type of objective. And as you work with them, you can kind of nail that down to two or three. I would never recommend trying to, at least all at once, 
solve for three different variables. If you can get them down to one or two, that's ideal because then you can start um, really from an ROI standpoint, just if, if you can prove that certain behavior happened as a result of something that we're doing, um, then that can help them justify doing more of it. Okay, great. So we, we talked a little about goals and we talked about measurement. Um, Jim, any specific examples you could give maybe that tie those two together where you helped set a goal and then, you know, any specifics you could share? You don't have to share a client's name, but you know, just a thought of, hey, here's a goal and here was a measurement we did and here's how we measured against it on a, a period of time? Sure, and, and unfortunately, most of our clients don't like us to share what we do with them from a strategy standpoint. Um, they're okay with us saying their names and that we work with them, but not necessarily what they're doing. Um, that said, I can talk about a couple things. Um, one of the things we've seen more and more of in the last year or so is uh, interactivity with touchscreen kiosks. And there's a wide belief that, it, especially again in the retail space, that uh, people that by giving people something to engage with for informational purposes, to present them with information or access to information, whether that's because they don't want to interact with uh, store salespeople or there aren't enough salespeople at certain hours to to support something. Um, there's a belief that by providing this information there that a certain demographic will interact with that. So by being able to track interactions with those kiosks and determine who's touching what, what content are they querying, which displays and which parts of a venue are being touched, um, and then are different, is different content being touched in different areas? Um, are people watching the entire uh, video that are, that's being played, or are they exiting it uh, early? Uh, you can start looking at, and then you know, if you're using anonymous viewer analytics and facial recognition type of technology, being able to determine is it the right demographic, or you know, if your if your target is a 45 year old male and a 16 year old boy is always playing with it, um, you know, the, you you might be playing the wrong content to engage that person. So we've seen examples like that where we're using it for screen placement uh, justification to verify that content is uh, is reaching the right demographic and that the content design is engaging people in ways that they're actually interacting with it or taking action as a result of it. Okay, great. Same question to you, Jesse. Do you have any specific examples of you know, tying that measurement and the goal together where you could uh, come up with actionable things for clients? Yeah, great question. So we have a client, and I, I can't get into too many details. So from a high-level overview, they're a developer and they invested in touchscreen technology, not kiosks, but really big displays. And they decided to have a specific purpose around uh, shopping on the display, but it wasn't very engaging in terms of metrics of usage. So to us, they, they were wondering, maybe people don't like touchscreen, or maybe they're just not using it, maybe they're not comfortable with it, or, or don't care about touch. But when they changed, they tweaked it a little bit. So they put the control in the hands of the passers-by with a clear call to action. So they said, hey, now you can pick your content. You can pick your experience. Why don't you choose? And so when they did that, the engagement went up. And they had a clear call to action on the screen as well. So having the proper calls to action are really important to drive engagement and then putting the choice in the customer's hands or the end user's hands, and then giving them a very great experience that it makes it, if they want to keep coming back, even evangelize their experience. So I've seen at a movie theater, there was a game using a connect with Cheetos, and you would throw Cheetos at a guy lying down on the floor, and he would try and capture, capture the Cheetos with his hands, and it was a gesturing game. And, uh, and at the end, you would, they would show you your results, and you had the option to share that on social media to be able to brag to your friends, hey, I played this Cheeto game, and I got 99% on it. So, uh, so I think that having clear, clear calls to action, a user experience is absolutely critical. Gamification, effective gamification is really 
critical to keep them coming back, get them talking about you, and having them be really addicted to your software. So uh, that's something that we tapped into with our social apps and as well as other interactive apps, for example, live transportation information as well. So at a commercial building, someone can go in. Uh, as employees are leaving their offices, they can see what is when is the bus coming? When is the train coming? Why, where is the nearest Uber or bike share or ride share? And when will it be here? And then while they're waiting for their ride, they have opportunity to engage through Instagram, through Twitter, uh, and it's opportunity to gamify. And when end users are engaging with your display, that's very valuable data that you can capture on them. And if they even opt in, for certain promotions, deals, or opt-in for anything, that's an additional data point that's very valuable for Great. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let, let's talk a little bit about the tools and methodologies that you're using to capture this information. You know, things like audience size, recall, recall rates, behavior, etc. cetera. Um, what tools are you using to capture that? And I'll, I'll start with you, Jesse. So we are currently providing analytics just around social media currently. And we found that our clients already have their uh, data collection of choice for the most part. So they actually don't ask us for analytics, but they do ask us how they can use our software to capture more data. So, so um, one application is there is an agency that wants to utilize our platform in combination with beacon and sensor technology, and they're also considering text message uh, surveying, um, also a retailer that wants to do NCAP engagement in partnership with brands. And so um, those kinds of creative ways of capturing data is what our clients are using our platform for. So what we do is we let our clients utilize our platform. Uh, what, what they're doing is they're putting the content and digital signage experience in the hands of the end user, and in exchange, the end user is providing data back to the network host. I understand. Just a quick question, though. Like The tools that they're using, are you familiar with any of the things? Are they using like Google Analytics or Kiss Metrics or Lucky Orange, any of those types of generic tools to capture that collate it, create dashboards? Oftentimes, actually, our clients don't want to divulge what they're using because it is proprietary okay. to them. But they do divulge the specific tools that they're using to capture the data, but they don't tell us like the actual software most cases, okay. but um, when it comes to like the social aspects, Hootsuite and Spreadsheet are the most popular ones, and we don't consider ourselves competing with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same question to you, Jim. Do you know any of the tools or methodologies that your clients are using to aggregate that together, you know, put it into a dashboard to be able to show progress? Yeah, and Jesse brought up a real good point about having a very clear call to action, especially the things that are driving people to social media or their web pages and that type of thing. So in some cases, if it's social media, yeah, it's, it's Hootsuite and programs like that. Um, we, you know, if it's driving people to mobile websites and mobile sites, so if we're going to, to outside tools, um, it's Google Analytics is probably the one thing that we hear the most about. Again, like Jesse, they don't always tell us when it's stuff outside of our hands, what they're using, we kind of help them develop a strategy and then they tend to pull in um, other partners or, or their internal IT department to analyze that data um, for that. Now that said, we do provide them a lot of analytics through, through our system to look at, again, I mentioned a minute ago, kiosks and large format um, touch screens. We, we track all that and provide them dashboards and reports and the ability to export all that raw data from a standpoint of who's interacting with what, what are they watching, um, how long are they engaged with it, that when are they engaged with it. Um, if we incorporate anonymous viewer analytics or facial recognition technology into that, we also provide that data alongside of that. So we can say that um, 
you know, there was X number of views of this media, and the average person listened or watched it for X duration, you know, full duration or, or what percentage is partial, and that we can give them a breakdown by gender, by age group, that type of thing. Um, we also find that we use that anonymous uh, viewer analytic data in some cases just to track who's watching displays. Now we can, um, in a non-interactive display, uh, we can trigger content based on that. So we can say there's a child in front of the screen, do or don't play a certain type of thing, or there's a female in front of the, the display, so play this or don't play this, um, where there's a group of people versus a single person. Um, but more often than not, we find that we're using that technology not necessarily to trigger content, but to aggregate data about those viewers, again, coming back to determining are those displays in the right locations? Um, is the desired demographic uh, looking at that, the content that we've designed for them, or is it a different demographic, which sometimes we find that somebody thinks that dem a certain demographic is going to uh, find themselves appealing to a certain piece of content or find a certain piece of content appealing to them, and we find that a totally different demographic is, so then we try to work with them to change that. Now, we also have incorporated Beacon technology, so... Uh, you know, if, if there's mobile apps, we'll work with the, we don't develop mobile apps ourselves, but we'll work with a client and their, their mobile app developers to incorporate that so we can trigger um, certain actions on a mobile app based on proximity to a display where we're driving that content. And those are the types of things predominantly that, that we're using. Okay, great. Um, just curious, one follow-up just on the audience analytics, do you find that a lot of your clients are putting cameras on the displays to collect that, or is it still a minority of the displays you put out there that, that have that type of technology? Sure, that's a great question, Ryan. Um, the short answer right now is it's a minority, and um, it it's becoming a bigger part of the discussion. What we're finding is that brands, regardless of their vertical, um, I don't care if it's retail, or restaurant, or hospitality, or we're, we're working on with a corporate application right now. It's HR based, and they want to be able to track people. Uh, there, we're we're finding more and more that people are talking about it. There's a big concern for the perception of privacy. Uh, it's okay to have a security camera right above the screen, but it's not okay to have a have a, a camera built into the screen or that's communicating with the display is what we're finding. And it's more of a perception thing, and I think some of that's a little bit generational, um, and, I, and I've seen a major evolution in the, the type of discussion that we've been having over the last maybe 24 months about this, that A, it's happened, people that were averse to it a year, year and a half ago are now much more interested and much more accepting of that technology. So I think the key here around this is that it's anonymous, and uh, I, my expectation is that we're going to see that start to become a majority in the next few years. Just curious, did you see something that caused the tipping point over the last few months that people are now more receptive to it that weren't in the past? Um, I can't put my thumb down on, on anything in particular. I think it's just... You know, and this is Jim's opinion that I don't have any data to back it up. Uh, but my, the impression I'm getting is that people are just becoming, uh, I don't want to say less concerned with privacy, but more open to how information about themselves is being shared. I think some of that's just based on stuff in the news and things they're doing with other mobile devices, mobile apps on the web. Uh, so I, I think as consumers and end users of other solutions, we're becoming more open to this data being used to um, provide us with relevant information as opposed to random, potentially irrelevant information. And as we become more accustomed to that and more comfortable with that, we're finding that people are a little more open to discussing, okay, I'm okay with this as a consumer. Am I okay with this as a brand now to potentially use this technology with my consumers? Okay. And to add to that point, Jim, over time, over the past few years, and Google and mobile has proven this, that 
consumers say they're afraid of data. They think it's creepy. They don't like it at all. But yet, they are willing to trade their data for convenience and value any day. So if you look at historically what's been happening, even till today, they are usually more than happy to give away data in exchange for convenience, value, like promotions, discounts, or to save them time. So, so that's a great opportunity for digital signage. I think what's really interesting is in January, the release of the news of JC, Deco, Clear Channel, Exterion, and APG partnering up to create the Nielsen rating system for digital out-of-home networks, which is, is really interesting because there is no standardization of metrics around whether or not an ad campaign was so I think it'll be really interesting to see by the end of 2015 what they come up with. And currently it seems like what they're mostly focusing on is eye tracking behavior. But one problem with that, um, and they also want to track demographics, so age, race, ex for example. But uh, one problem with the data right now around that is it's notoriously inaccurate. However, it is getting more accurate. So, for example, how old.net that shows that software can become a lot more accurate when it captures people's images. So it'll be exciting to see what happens with that this year. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about evaluating that data. Um, I'll start with you, Jesse. You know, when users get all this data back for, and they're looking at making measurable changes, any interpretation guidelines, any guidance you give them on how to read that data and to make meaningful changes? Yeah, so, so the advice that I give uh, to kind of elaborate more on my last point is that you have to know what questions to ask and then set your dashboards to those questions so that the dashboards aren't just feeding random information because it's very costly and very tedious to collect data and just gathering any and all data and looking at it doesn't do anything for most people. And in fact, it's usually a waste of time and money. So understanding exactly how to set and structure your dashboard uh, with the end goal in mind is extremely critical. And then two is giving it enough time to be able to have a proper sample size of collection of data because uh, one week's time or one month or even one quarter sometimes isn't enough of a sample size to understand what's really happening, who your demographics are, which is something I hear a lot about. I don't even really know who my demographic is, and, and Jim touched upon this as well. So, so having a proper sample size and then structuring your dashboard and having it be actionable with actionable data that you can accept, access anytime. And actually, a digital sign is a perfect platform to show a dashboard with your team in office. Uh, so, so having that always available to you is extremely important. And then automating it as much as possible is really important as well. You don't want to have so, so many manual processes Okay. data collection. Same question to you, Jim. Any guidelines you give clients for interpreting the data and uh, how to make incremental improvements? Sure. And, and Jesse touched upon a lot of it there. What I'll add is that it's it's really important, it, really in any vertical that we work in, to have a control group and uh, you know and a non-control group. Or blank on the, the scientific term for it, but the um, you know what we find is there's a lot of variables. I don't care really what vertical you're playing in, there are a lot of variables that are constantly in motion. So it's important to have a nice sample size, but not necessarily have it 100% before it's actionable. Um, and it's important to, to Jesse's point to gather enough data for enough time to determine that something is worth taking action on. Uh, but what we find is people generally want to move really quickly. They, they think they found something. And they and they want to move on it immediately, and it's important to make sure that it's not some other, uh, you know, it's the time of year, or it's the you know something else that's going on. They change something else in the environment um, that maybe we weren't trying to control for. Uh, so so that's really important. So I think it, it really takes time to think through again, break it back down to what's what's the objective, what are the goals about this, what are we going to measure, and almost in define up front 
what's an actionable item before you try to measure it because once you start measuring it, people look for things to justify change. Um, as much as people are averse to change, if you just start giving them data without a plan to execute on that data in advance, sometimes they, they will actually want to move on data, uh, which may be okay, but it's not always okay to try to justify something just based on something that you see as a pattern when maybe it's not. So if anything, be scientific about it. Makes sense. Well, I just want to remind everyone we're kind of wrap, nearing the end here, starting to wrap up. So if you do have any last questions, feel free to put those in. We definitely want to get your questions answered as we, uh, we move towards the end here. Um, so I'll throw one last question at uh, both of you guys here. Uh, pretty wide open in general. I'll start with you, Jim. Any best practices, common mistakes to avoid? Any you know, general advice? Sure. And Jesse touched on this one a, a moment ago, too, is we find that sometimes we'll have the discussion with uh, about collecting data and what are we going to measure, but the, because there's not a plan to actually do the to, once the data is aggregated to analyze that data and make decisions. In some cases, brands will collect a lot of data and do nothing about it. It just ends up wasting time and money. So go into it with a plan and again determine what's going to be actionable. So you know from a, a, a mistake that people make that, that it's really probably saying they're going to do something without a plan. Um, and it's, it's just like you know, not having an objective for a digital signage network to begin with. We run into cases where a client will just be convinced they need digital signage because a competitor is doing it or because they're seeing it everywhere, and they decide they just want to throw something up there, and they realize they don't have a content strategy around it and other things like that. So it's really important to develop that strategy, develop that plan up front, and then execute. And you know, we're here, and Jesse's there to help you with those type of things. That's what we want to do um, because we want to see you successful as well. Makes sense. Same question to you, Jesse. Any best practices or common mistakes that uh, you'd like to leave guidance with our viewers? Yeah, and considering this audience of typically installers and software providers of digital signage, obviously don't hold yourself to like have to provide an ROI for your client, but be consultative enough that you know what their goals are and you can achieve those goals in a way that exceeds their expectations. And oftentimes the client, let's say they're not the end decision maker, oftentimes the end decision maker is the one who, who says what metrics they want to see in order to consider the implementation a success. So. I would say in those cases, the, the most important thing is to not waste time gathering data that you don't need and making sure that there is a clear expectation set that's, uh, that's smart so it's um, measurable, achievable, results-oriented, results and time-based in a way that's realistic, that can that can even set you up to exceed your client's expectations. So I think a lot of it is taking control of the situation if the client is being unreasonable and setting uh, the proper expectations so that you're still hitting their goals. Because oftentimes our clients don't really understand technology too much, so they think, oh, you're coming in and you can do anything that they ask for. But I think that a lot of it is working together collaboratively and kind of coaching them through the process, educating them on digital signage, setting their expectations, and making sure that they don't waste valuable time and money collecting data that they don't need. Makes sense. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any questions that have come in, so uh, I'll, I'll just kind of give each of you a chance to put your closing thoughts together. Any uh, takeaways that anyone either watching this live or the recorded version should really stop and think about when it comes to uh, measuring their digital signage. And I'll start with you, Jesse. Sure. So I talked to an executive of a leading advertising agency, and he told me that Advertising is dead, and the best advertising is no advertising. And right now, there is a shift going on in digital media and content. I went to the Technology Innovators Forum, where top entertainment and media companies were hosting panels about what is the future 
of digital content consumption. And the collective consensus was we're throwing money at a bunch of ideas, but we still don't know what the future holds. And, and the pace of change is more and more rapid over time. So what's really critical is that we keep on top of it and we understand uh, exactly what we want to achieve when we start the project and, um, and ensuring that whatever we do, that we're doing it um, in the most effective way possible in terms of capturing people. Um, so I think that digital signage has a great opportunity. It's, it's growing tremendously and it's all about having content that's organic and not advertising. Gotcha. We do have a question that came in, but I think I'll let Jim, if you want to give us your closing thoughts first and then we'll actually wrap up with a question. Um, so Jim, I'll give sure. us your, your thoughts. Sure. I'm going to echo a lot of what I said at the, at the end there, the last question. It's really important to have a plan. Um, the other part I'll say is digital signage networks historically have been fairly isolated, and when you can integrate them into other technical solutions or, or non-technical solutions, it may be, again, actionable items on social media, trying to drive people to mobile sites, trying to get people to download a mobile app and use a mobile app to, um, it, it may be to actually trigger content and maybe you are going to try to lift sales directly from digital signage and you want to be able to measure that. That's okay. But the more you can think about integrating with other systems and what actionable items can you have as a result of digital signage um, to do that, um, that's where you're going to create more value. And so how do you measure those type of things? And don't just throw out a concept without developing a plan. It's really key to have something that's actionable and measurable and define how you're going to measure it up front. Um, don't wait until you get the data before you decide how you're going to interpret it. Okay, great. So the question came in is, uh, what are some of the current trends for non-camera based audience measurement? Things like Bluetooth. Um, and do we see any future standards developing? Um, so I'll start with you, Jim. Any thoughts on that? Sure. You know, people come to, to camera-based technology all the time, but there's really all kinds of audience measurement tools. Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier being able to track um, touches and clicks on, on uh, being able to, to look at kiosks or, or touch screens. And Jesse mentioned uh, social media at the very, very beginning and being able to measure that, those are key. Um, but, being, but beacons are really hot right now as a concept. Um, I don't think they're being deployed nearly at the rate that we're talking about them, but, mm -hmm. yeah, um, but they're really hot as a concept right now and they're really effective um, when they're deployed right and when they're integrated with mobile applications right. Uh, NFC and even QR codes can be effective. Uh, I saw a report earlier today um, looking at demographic data from around the world and who likes to use QR codes um, and who's willing to use them. So being able to, to look at that, using Wi-Fi technology to track um, where people are in a specific venue and when there's a handoff if you're giving free Wi-Fi, um, when there's a handoff of a device and looking at traffic patterns is key. Um, Philips in Europe has a technology that uses the camera on mobile devices to uh, track proximity and uh, as it's integrated with mobile apps again. So really anything where we can look at proximity and generally that's some kind of network, um, again whether it's Bluetooth or, or you know, beacons are Bluetooth, but um, BLE, NFC, Wi-Fi, the, the Philips lighting uh, solution, um, GPS enabled in, in mobile apps, um, and how do we integrate that into a digital signage strategy is really pretty key. Great. Uh, Jesse, anything to add to that? Any um, non-technology yeah. based technologies you're looking at and any future standards you see developing? Yeah, so, so working with agencies and executives that are at the forefront of this change, I don't see Bluetooth as leading the path. There's a lot of challenges with it. For example, too many layers of opt-in. What I see are the opportunities are, one, the Internet of Things. So using the mobile device as an opportunity via Internet to be able to capture data on the customer. So whether it be a mobile application experience or interaction, um, 
or or any kind of Internet of Things kind of integration with digital signage. So one example, um, also another another uh, technology is sensor technology that is that is growing. So there's a commercial real estate developer that has shopping centers worldwide, and they are testing and have already deployed a program using sensor technology that they hand out to people as they enter the shopping mall, and this sensor. Uh, personalizes their experience, and uh, even to the extent of unlocking deals, having salespeople know who they are by name, and putting that kind of control that isn't creepy, but an opt-in, but also very easy to, to utilize throughout the venue, um, that could also be tied in with digital signage is, is key. Uh, another uh, emerging technology I think will grow rapidly is uh, endless aisles in retail. So in retail, uh, if you come in as a customer and you're looking for a product that isn't available in stock, to have the option to buy, whether it be through your mobile phone, through a touch screen uh, display, uh, also to be captured by a brand, uh, a brand's call to action. So we're working with a with a brand that sells a food brand. So at end caps to create uh, some kind of a survey capture or opt-in for promotion. So, for example, one of their products keeps people out of the doctor's office and it increases your health. So they want to educate customers on that. So there's a call to action saying, hey, take our health care survey or take our health survey. And then they educate the consumer on how much money buying this product can save you in, in doctor's costs over time. And then in addition to that, after that, you can unlock a promotion or a deal. So it, it's interesting to see all the different technology that can capture data from gesturing and eye tracking and uh, and just images like taking pictures of the passersby, a beacon sensor, text technology, social media. Uh, it's 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 very personalized to the client. But there are challenge, a lot of challenges with Bluetooth, and I don't recommend it. So it'll be interesting to see as this industry gets more data analytics focused, and there's a lot more accountability in place for the buyers to see how it evolves over the next year. Great. Well, excellent. Well, with that, uh, I don't believe we have any other questions that have come in. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, both you, Jim and Jesse, for sharing your time and thoughts and opinions on the, on the topic. And again, for everyone viewing, um, you know, stay tuned to the Digital Signage Federation. There's upcoming events. We try to hold these hangouts every couple of weeks, so check the topics list. And again, if you have ideas, if uh, you'd like to participate, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the DSF. We are, we're always looking for new ideas and content to keep these types of conversations going to help advance the industry. So with that, I thank everyone for their time today and uh, look forward to the next one.